Coming to you live from my apartment, it's Rob has a podcast, and now here's the guy who may or may not have just gotten a massage from the Finchler, Rob Sesternino. <laughs> Hello everybody, and welcome to a very special edition of Rob has a podcast with a very special in-studio guest. Here he is making his, I believe, third uh, full recap appearance on Rob as a podcast, John Fincher. Hey, Rob. How are you? Let me Thanks move the bell. The bell is so far away. Oh, I was missing yeah. the bell. Perfect. Uh, this is Really, uh, when was the last time we did one of these? I don't remember, to be honest. It has to be more than a full year ago. More than a full year I think ago. It was, I think it was at least three seasons What was the ago. season? I feel like it was, was it during... It was during Russell Hance's season, I think. No, it was Survivor One World. Oh, it was Survivor the One fir- World. Yeah, and you talked about Christina Cha. God, you're such a professional. Yeah, right? that was that was what it was. I'm yep. sure we've talked we've talked to you a few times since then. Yep. But that was the last time we had you fully here or, or at my old house. Correct. This is the first time anyone is live in studio here. I am thrilled. What a privilege. Other than Nicole. That's fair. I, I can't compete with her. Yes, but uh, very good to see, good to see you here in person. Look, this for those of you not watching live. What a high quality studio we are in today. I mean, goodness gracious, this place is. I mean, what a privilege. Oh, thank you, thank you very really much, well Sean. Done. I appreciate it. No, that. sincerely. So we are we are here and uh, we are recording the video on this. So if you're listening to the audio version and you want to see the Fincher uh, in person, and there's a lot of people requested. Uh, they wanted to see the Fincher. You can see this on my <laughs> YouTube channel, uh, which is at robaswebsite.com slash YouTube. Perfect. There you go. Great. So, um, John, how you doing? I am doing great, Rob. It's a beautiful day here in Los Angeles. I think it was 88 as I pulled my car up yeah. to your sweet apartment. Blue skies, the sun is shining. I mean, what more do you want? It's October. You seem like you have an extra uh, spring in your step today. I'm a happy guy, you know. What seem, I mean? You seem especially happy today. Li- life is good. Life okay. is good. Rob. So like something's up. Is any? Is I it... met your child today for the oh, first okay. time. What? What? You know? What does one need more than that? What do you think? He looks. Looks. Look, I think above he, average. I think he is the chosen one. Okay. I think he is the chosen. The, I, the prince of podcasts. I thought that you were going to present him to me like Simba was presented to the world by that baboon. Yes. yes. <sighs> I think he's worthy. Yeah, you know the character names, don't you? No, I don't. Okay. I, what's the baboon's name? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so, <laughs> all right, we got a lot to get to here uh, with the Finchler. Now, a, a lot of people may or may not know this. You actually played with one of the people from your season is actually on this uh, new season, Blood vs. Water. That's in true. Laura Moret. That's a who fact. Who actually was voted out last night. That's also a fact. Okay, but, so I'm sure you'll have a lot to say about her. Oh, well, you know, she and I did play together. Our, uh, she was on my season, so, uh, yeah. You may have an inside expert analysis. I can of... provide, actually, some in, in, insider insight uh, to a few of the players and what they're thinking right oh, now. Oh, good. Actually. So you are a reliable character witness. I am very, very reliable. I will admit when things are hearsay. I will I will, I will, will identify assumptions, and we will be very forthcoming here. All right, well, that is, that is fantastic. Um of course, we had the Survivor know-it-alls last night. Uh, yeah. Myself and Stephen Fishback broke what a combination. it. We broke it down. What a combination. Now, I'm I yet offered, to see that. I'm really disappointed. I offered you the opportunity to join us on Survivor it's know-it-alls true, you last did. night. You and did. you said, no, I want my own podcast. That's not exactly the way that I <laughs> phrased it, Rob. But uh, you know, I like the dynamic that you and Stephen have. And it's a good, heavy-hitting, short, 45, just bang straight to the point. It's great. And I had a great time being on. Actually, that would have been the last time. Uh, but yeah, that's right. If that's your right. question is, you know, was not limited to the podcast only, but uh, I had a great time on the Know It Alls as a, as a as special invited guest. It was a it was a pleasure. Um, but I like I like this. I feel like this dynamic isn't rushed. And we can setting. let it breathe a little. Exactly, bit. exactly. Yeah. I don't have to be quite so sharp. There's Survivor pressure. Know It Alls is the first word. Boom, boom, boom. We got to get through everything. Exactly. Is, we can sort of. We had. We got to <clears throat> sleep on it. Right. We got to think about it a little right. bit, and now it's sort of like these are the things that have sort of come up in the next day and we can sort of right. dive in a little deeper than right. we can on Survivor. Exactly. Notice. All right, so it's going to be a very fun show. Then later on, I'm going to uh, take your voicemails. Uh, I'm going to do that with Josh Wiggler, who co-hosts. We do a Walking Dead recap also oh, wow. on Rob as a podcast. Wow. That's on Sunday night. And Josh Wiggler, of course, he writes the blogs uh, about Survivor on Rob has a website.com. So uh, wow. we will ch- I'm going to have to start watching more television so that I can you enjoy can more so of your podcast. So that'll be uh, later on mm-hmm. in this show. But uh, first things first, we got the Finchiller here. No, this is great. Hi, guys. Yeah. So, uh, John, 
Blood versus Water. A lot of people did not like this idea coming out. Were you in favor of this, and or has or has your opinion changed? I think uh, I think like any new uh, any new structure of the show. I think most people are hesitant at first to to be totally accepting to change. I think that's a bit of human nature. Um, but you know, it's you know, there's going to be some benefit, right? And this one was was such a, d- a drastic change um, that that you know, I, I I saw the potential benefits initially, um, but now we're really starting to see. I think as the players learn and we're watching them learn, I think we're really seeing what the potential holds, um, especially in a post-merge environment. All right. So last mm-hmm. night we had the big shocking blindside at Tribal Council. Your old friend, Laura Moret, ends up being the one to go home. Steven and I discussed this at length last night. Did the right Laura go home? What's your take on so this? So I, I, first I must admit that I don't know what you guys discussed last night. Yeah. I did quickly read Steven's blog this morning, mm-hmm. um, so I think I know what his position is. Um, and I, I think the answer to that will is dependent on who you are on mm-hmm. the on the uh, you know on the returning players tribe, right? I think it can be the right thing. Uh, and, and Ara said it perfectly. The easy vote is not always the right vote. Uh, it is, I think, day ten or day eleven. Um, so sometimes you have to take the easy votes. Um, but I think Aris is very aware of what he was doing. You know, he articulated his move very well and said, "Look, I don't want to be the one dictating everything this early in the game. I don't want people to know how much, how much power I have." Um, but that said, I have to have a bit of faith and confidence in Aris and think that he knew what he was doing in that moment, um, in in getting rid of her. Um, and you know, Laura Boneham is it Bonham or Boneham? It, I'd go with uh, Boneham. I think it's. I think you can always get enough momentum to get her out whenever you want. Um, and I think it's a risk that 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 Aris took. But if you're not totally sure about somebody and you don't totally trust them, you know, sooner or later in this game, you're going to have to start taking risks. Some might argue that this was a little premature, but I, I I think only time will tell whether this was a good move. You know, Laura has played Survivor. Laura Moret has played Survivor twice. And I still don't feel like I have a good sense of who she is. And I feel like she didn't really get that much coverage on Survivor Samoa. Right. And she didn't really get that much coverage here. Right. And I feel like I really don't know if she's a good player or not. Right. I mean, I I, I, I agree. I agree. I, I, I think most viewers... Uh, coming into this season, felt like they don't know that much about her, and certainly with with the returning players winning nearly all of the challenges and never going to tribal, they didn't learn much more about her. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, live with her for a month and then another couple, uh, you know, another week, a uh, week and a half at Ponderosa. Um, so maybe I have some uh, some additional insight uh, on her, but uh, yeah, I mean, I I, I think she's a, a didn't do a lot to um, let the producers show her. I guess is, is seemingly in this season or in Samoa. Well. I don't really understand. Like, I feel like that there's a lot of people that are on the show for for less time. I feel like we get a really good sense of who they are. Right. But what do you mean she doesn't do a, a lot to show yeah. the producers who she is? I, I, I think I was making reference to a Jeff Probst quote um, in which he said something like, you know, we, we had Laura tapped for a potential returning player or something, but we weren't really that dead set on it. And it wasn't until we saw her daughter and met her daughter, and then we knew, bang, we had to have her. Mm-hmm. So I don't really know what that means because Sierra hasn't anything particularly impressive either. Right. Uh, but but so kind of production is leaning in and saying, look, we're not getting a whole lot out of her. Maybe like the way that we're getting things out of Vetus or we're getting things out of other players, um, you know, Brad Culpepper, even out of Candace, who's who's been pretty impactful in the storyline from Redemption Island, right? Um, so you know, I, I I think they're I, I think they're struggling to get certain things out of her. Maybe I, you know I don't know. I don't have a background in production, so I'm probably underqualified to speak on that. Is but. Laura Moret a good Survivor player? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, I think um, you know she played. Uh, a, a, it, I will talk about this season first, and then I can we can talk about Samoa if you want. But I don't think very many people remember Samoa. Let's be honest; it was years ago now. I think the people that listen but to this show c- very informed uh, yes. viewership. I agree. The, um, the the you know the average Survivor fan maybe not. I think sure. the person willing to listen to sure. two and a half three hours of uh, me is, talk we're going for five hours every week. Right. Perfect. Perfect. Um, no, I uh, okay. I agree with you. Right. I I, uh, I didn't want to be referencing Samoa like people just finished watching the season. Right. Um, 
Well, I mean, I think in in, in this in this season, she's a pre-merge boot, which typically says all it needs to say about you, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think when your game is tight and your game is solid, you thrive in a professional season um, with returning players. I think that's when you know everything is good. Now, I'm sitting here talking to a pre-merge boot on an all-star season. However, you were removed from the game under much different circumstances. Well, you know, I, I don't want to, you know... Um... Is it apples and oranges? Because I, I feel no, like if you're saying that, well, I, she's I, a pre-merge boot I on a return it, I, play I think season. it's apples and oranges, though, because I, I don't think anyone, when Aris, when people walk back onto that beach and they're looking around at Tina and they're looking around at Tyson and they're looking around at Aris and they're looking around at Laura, they're not going, Laura's going first because she's so damn scary, right? Mm-hmm. She went first because she's not, she doesn't understand the social dynamics. She doesn't understand the power dynamics. She doesn't understand certain I mean, key from elements the episode, of the game. all that we got was... She has to go because she could go to Redemption Island and she could beat Brad Culpepper. It, that was the only motive we got it, from the episode. I, I would put in, I would agree with you, and I would further that it, it, as a production critique. I mean, we really, this was the most underdeveloped rationale for sending someone home. Not necessarily I'm saying that it was underdeveloped for the players that did it and executed the move, mm-hmm. but we didn't see any of it in the edit, right? We, we don't really, like you say, we don't know anything, really. Um, I did watch the episode last night with Otis and Vita. Oh, you did you watch Sons you, of Linus? You got an invitation to the Biscowskis brothers. The Biscowskis brothers like to. Uh, I think they enjoy my company uh, as much as I enjoy theirs. How They're, could they not? Yeah, you know, they could. They 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 could not, but uh, <laughs> that they do in this case. Uh, and I think both of those guys are cool guys, so uh, it's it's fun. So I got a little more insight there, um, but you know, I, I I don't think. She was doing anything that was particularly uh, uh, strategic, and 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 she ultimately was unsuccessful both times. You know, I haven't watched the secret scenes. I sense that there's probably more to the story than well, she could go to Redemption Island and she could probably beat Brad Culpepper. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think what we do know, we we do know a few things. We know there's a pretty tight, highly functioning five-person alliance that she's not a part of, mm-hmm. right? We know that. You know, probably people think Monica Culpepper is a little bit weaker because Brad is such a lunatic, right? Um, I, I know some how people would like da- to see Brad. How dare you? Well, how dare you? By the way, let me let me preface this with saying I like Brad. I think a lot of people don't like Brad, and I don't. I mean, I understand you know why they don't like him, but I like him. I think there's. I think that that one deserves like a f- at least a few compliments. It seems like a lot of people aren't giving him any credit, but the guy's a competitor. And and people don't like that. You know, I, I think the critique I would say is he doesn't have any survivor gears. He can't shift gears strategically. Mm-hmm. He can't shift gears from an energy and in, 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 uh, sort of enthusiasm way, but which is important in the game. You can't just go pedal to the metal the whole the whole way. But I, it makes it fun to watch. I like that. And certainly physically, he's a threat. And he's a competitor, you know what I mean? And, and and you see that. I think he deserves a ton of praise for the way he showed up at Redemption Island with Candace and John and said, look, white flag, it's over. We went head to head. I apologize. And, and, and it was genuine, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? He wasn't faking that. It wasn't like he was burning inside. Could Brad says, throw I apologize, a, a yellow flag at Candace? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, all right, hey, that's, that's, uh, you're out of bounds, Candace. <laughs> you watch that Jets football. You love the NFL. I do love the NFL. Um, I'm a Cowboys fan, so I can't agree with you on your on your you, New York team. Do you know I do a podcast with uh, Terrell Owens? Look, you you know what I heard you know something this? of that, and it was on my to do list uh, to look uh, more into. Uh, we're yes. gonna go back. Right. We're gonna go back to that. Uh, yeah, but so uh, Brad Culpepper, you are you, I, you're a fan. I'm a fan. I think the guy plays hard. I don't I don't think he's the necessarily the best survivor player of all time. But you know what? He stepped up when no one else really wanted to, and in and he took a hard position that he knew was a risky move, and he did it. And the guy's a competitor. And by the way, he's a good loser. And a lot of people don't he realize was. that. that yeah. There's a lot of bad losers here. And being the way you become a good loser is by being a true competitor. Because sooner or later, no matter what, if you test yourself, mm-hmm. you will lose. You know, So he's a good guy. The people that you played with on Survivor Samoa, mm-hmm. were there a lot of good losers in Survivor Samoa? Let me take off my shoes to count here. Uh, there were next to zero good losers. And that's synonymous with true competitors. You know what I mean? Um, you know, it, 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 the people were very, very off-put by everything, mm-hmm. um, and I think that is is the most true definition of of a sour, bitter jury. Uh, you know that we had on Samoa, without question. Um, let's talk about the 
opening moments of uh, the episode uh, this week, where a lot of was made about the uh, massage with Laura and Otis. <coughs> right. Uh, did you did you follow did you follow any of this? I, I so here's what I I saw some chatter. Yeah, I, there was I, some... I, I was I was keeping up with it. I I saw the initial clip on on the Survivor After Show, um, and I wasn't surprised when I saw it the first time, knowing Laura and having played. You like with the Laura. Survivor After Show? I think the Survivor After Show is great. Well hosted, well produced, uh, lots of talent there. Uh, but <laughs> the you know that clip was was not surprising to me as someone that knows Laura and. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with being in your 40s, right? I, but my point is, just age gracefully. Do so gracefully. Wait, well, wait, wait, how do we get to... Why are she we talking acts, about She age? doesn't act her age. You yeah. know what I mean? You, you know, and, 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 and I understand, you know, complaining about the edit and complaining about this and that, but I don't understand what context that was surrounding that inappropriate moment that CBS could have removed... That was making it inappropriate. Well, right? a lot was made. Or about that was this. making it inappropriate. And, and I feel like a, a lot of this was brought on by Laura herself yesterday, uh, who posted on on Facebook. I know not everybody is on, you know, follow. Some people like, hey, I like Survivor, but I don't need to be involved. Right. In, you know, and people aren't following everybody on Facebook right. and whatever, and aren't in the whole mm -hmm. soap opera of you know investment of being a fan of Survivor. Sure. So on uh, Laura's Facebook page yesterday there was a message that brought up, and I feel like I'm not talking out of school because then this was picked up by some news outlets, including Reality Blurred, oh, really? who who posted uh, about this. And I, again, I, I'm not sure how much of this is is newsworthy, but basically she posts, uh, to all my family and friends, I knew going into this that I was taking a chance at the risk of the edit of Hollywood. Right. Edits in quotes. Tonight's episode of Survivor does just that. They have taken a completely innocent situation and made it look intimate. Those of you who know me know my heart and how much I love, value my faith, my husband, my family, and those of you who don't, you're going to think uh, what you want, but please know that I would have given the same massage to my sons. Uh, so that's why I'm <laughs> so offended by how CBS is implying anything inappropriate. Please hang in there with me. I know it doesn't make sense now, but it will as the weeks go by. Oh, very... <laughs> This is uh, foreshadowing? Isn't that breach of contract? <laughs> uh, if you think the show has been intense so far, just wait. The excitement's about to really... Well, the, exci it did the excitement did start last night. Look, I mean, I, 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 big apology. Big apology. I think she's relieved, to be honest. Yeah. Because I think there was more to it than that. More? And I think that CBS could have showed more inappropriate behavior, is, my, is what How, my instinct what, is. What, where could there have been more? I don't. I, so I read. I read Eliza's tweet. Did you read Eliza's tweet? No. You know. I feel like everyone who, who follows the show the, so, yeah. follows Eliza. So okay. I feel like that's fair game. All right. So. But Eliza says something along the lines of, "Hey, Laura, like, what's with the massive PR apology? Yeah, it Eliza, didn't seem that bad." Eliza right? and Laura had been feuding a little bit on Twitter previously. Okay. See, so these these things I'm not up to date. And with. last week, I believe Eliza had the tweet that said, hey, uh, "This Sierra doesn't seem like the sharpest pencil in the box." I believe right. was the tweet. Tweet. Which yeah. is tr which is a fair assessment and is likely true. <laughs> All right. I'm um, just gonna slide my laptop over here. Sure. So those of you guys watching the video, excuse my reach. But I think I think my reaction to Eliza's tweet was Eliza. She wrote that very very crazy uh, apology because she was scared of what's out there. You know what I mean? I don't think she was apologizing, thinking they were just gonna show that little clip of her. You know, uh, massaging Aris with her eyes closed, resting her head on his on his shoulders. You know what I mean? I think there was more to it than that, and I and I think it was with more people than Aris. Um, you think there were more? You think there were more massages? I don't think she was discriminating. Uh, I I think that she was using that as a tool uh, to get in with people. I, I, that's I, get, my opinion. I have to be honest. I didn't think it was that bad. I think I I, I, do, I don't think that there is a husband that would want to be treated that way by his wife certainly on camera there's a and I, there's and, 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 a husband that would want his wife to treat somebody else that way no 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 meaning what she's doing mm -hmm. reflects her character and also reflects her family right i mean her family it, it can potentially become a victim of her behavior as it's getting internationally broadcast right um, and and i don't think that that uh, you know i can't i'm not going to speak for her husband right but my point is if that were my wife doing that with someone else like that i wouldn't be pleased um you know i i, I think that's the point
You know who else was pretty worked up on the Twitter last night about all this? Mm. Uh, your old buddy from Survivor Samoa, Russell Hans. Russell Hans. Russell Hans was was not happy about this this scene. And again, mm-hmm. I kind of feel like much ado about nothing. Okay. I, I didn't sure. I I didn't think it was it was that bad, and I thought it sure. did play into the story of that she gave Otis this <laughs> massage, and I felt like. I feel like this kind of annoyed Otis. Like in the moment, he was like, "Whatever." Well, but I think, as you know, as the you know, day, you know, night turned to day, mm-hmm. um, I felt like he kind of said, "You know, I feel like she's trying to manipulate me." Well, I think, and I felt I, like he was a little annoyed about the massage after the fact. Well, I think probably during the fact as well, he was uncomfortable. Yeah. Actually, I don't have to think that. I know that for a fact. <laughs> yeah. Um, part of the upside of knowing people personally, mm-hmm. but. Uh, in that in that situation, if you're not comfortable with it, right? Uh, and, and I can tell you, RS wasn't comfortable with that. The problem is, you want to get out of that situation, but doing so is so complicated because you don't want to piss the other person off, right? And you don't want Laura to know you're not comfortable because you, you know you want everything to be just totally fine and totally easy. Um, you know, the thing about that, the comfortable versus uncomfortable thing uh, with that. Uh, I thought it was funny as I, I rewatched the episode um, when I was uh, feeding the baby last mm-hmm. night, and I thought it was funny. Shout out to Dominic. Yeah, Dominic, yeah, shout, shout out. Shout what out, up, Dominic. Um, so she's, she's giving the massage, and uh, he's like, "Oh yeah, like uh, all right, yeah, that feels good, Laura M." Sure. And like, I just thought it was funny that we needed to still have the initial there. <laughs> like, I feel like that speaks to if you're including the person's last name, right. I feel like... Um, it's not an intimate moment. I feel like it's not an intimate moment. I feel like that language is a trained thing from the production, from all the interviews you have. I think that I think that every time you would say something, mm-hmm. every time you would say Laura, they would say, stop, say that again, and say Laura M. So I think that behavior is a, is a learned behavior um, taught by production to RS and to the other players. Yeah, um, let's see. Uh, so Russell Hans... You what know, did there, Russell have to say? There, there were so many... Uh, Russell actually called me last night on the phone, or I called him or something. I think we, Russell was uh, we calling were, a lot we, of people last we night. We talked last night, yeah. yeah. Uh, let me let me bring up Russell's uh, Twitter from last night. Uh, he was... He basically... He was... Felt like this was an embarrassment to Laura and her family mm-hmm. that what what happened on this show. I uh, I would agree. Yeah. Uh, okay. I would agree. I mean, I, I I have something here that someone sent me that is it, it, it's a quick couple of sentences, but it sums it up pretty well, right? And and Aaron Lobdell very succinctly said, "You don't have to apologize for something that you didn't do." In fact, she says, "You never have to apologize for something that you didn't do." That's that's and, fair. And, and, and that was, I think, in response to Laura's thing. But um, let's let's see this. So I, I got sent this today, but we can all agree that Survivor is a game, and some players are more competitive than others. Who is it? This is from this, this is from Aaron Lobdell. This is not from Lobdell. That was just okay. a very succinct thing from Aaron Lobdell, right? Yes. So this is Who, on, this actually is, this is just a tease. This is true. We'll be uh, on the podcast next week. Shout out to Aaron Lobdell. Okay. Um, and uh, she might have some big news for you. Oh, what? another another tease. Another tease. Oh my God. Another tease. Uh, but so here, I'll, I'll read this very quickly. But we just can, tell me what are you reading? I, I I am reading something that someone sent me on this topic. This of, is a, of 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 your your of your tweet. You quoted Russell's tweet saying Laura embarrassed her family. Okay, so okay. And, and you're what you're reading us now is a blind item from a former survivor. No, no, uh, this is a, from a from, from a from a survivor viewer. From a survivor viewer. Here it is. But I thought it was very an anonymous survivor viewer. An anonymous survivor viewer, right, and blind, I thought it was okay. very well written. Blind item from an anonymous Survivor viewer coming up. You framed it perfectly. Okay. Here it is. We can all agree that Survivor is a game and that some players are more competitive competitive than others. Some will throw all caution to the wind just to win, even at the expense of their reputation, which, of course, lives on after the show. It was Laura's choice to compete with her daughter, and when our children are involved or exposed to our actions, as a parent, you must hold yourself to a higher standard. As a grandmother, wife, and mother, Laura's behavior raised more than a few eyebrows in an adult audience. I wonder how she will feel when she watches the episode with her family. Women who have worked so hard to be recognized for their intellect are sure to find Laura's behavior more than a little disappointing. Morette? Correct. Uh, Laura M. Yeah. Laura M. 
Sorry, uh, I was trying to get intimate there with you, Rob. I yeah. didn't think I thought we could do away with the last name. I, and just to give you real quick, um, <laughs> and then I'll respond to that. Sure. The Russell Russell Hance uh, tweets. Let me just give you a couple. I know we're gonna skip. We'll, he was, we'll do ra- all was he, he was raging. Ranting, last night, right? Ranting. Ranting. Rage and cage. Uh, Russell Hance uh, tweeted. Did you guys see uh, the married Laura rubbing in that guy? What you married men think about that? And then like 19 question marks and exclamation points. <laughs> like he likes to get his 60 characters, huh? The fact of the matter is that Laura is not even that popular to be concerned about what she did to her husband. <laughs> LOL. Oh, well, it is what it is. <laughs> he, loves, he loves LOL and yeah. he loves it is what it um, is. <laughs> uh, he also tweeted, Of course you trust him, Laura. You want to F him. <laughs> No, no, I don't think she said that. I watched the episode twice. She didn't mention anything about that. Right, in, in the episode, yeah. She, she did say, she though, uh, say that, that if Aris tells me who to vote for, that's it, I write their name down. She did say that. She did. And she, did, and she actually proved it by writing uh, more of them. <laughs> she did. So. Uh, and then Russell said, uh, oh, well, I, I always said karma is an MF. Uh, and then, uh, hey, guys, here's the deal. At Laura Moret is exactly what you see. I am as well, exactly what you see. I played the game. Uh, she's a little much. <laughs> <laughs> Epic. Uh, Epic. Yeah, Speaking so I, of at Laura wait, Moret. You, you want any more? No, I want uh, some oh. more. But I, I, I just, you reading at Laura Moret made me think about something pretty funny. So yes. the other day, I don't follow her on Twitter, but the other day I Googled her on Twitter. So if the kids are watching, turn the podcast off now. But the the results, when you when you search for Laura Moret on Twitter, there is a second Laura Moret that has an extra T. Oh no. That is a highly inappropriate <laughs> Twitter <laughs> handle. And I'm wondering if that's a coincidence that if you just add one T to Laura Moret, so how do you we, get something even more inappropriate? So do we have know. to be more specific about Laura M uh, <laughs> Laura M with one Laura, with only two Laura T's? Moret with one T? Do right. we need to be more specific? Is it M is it R R E T one T? I, you I know, know, I think she's actually one she R. She might be one, one R, R and two, two T's. T's. So yeah, with two T's as opposed to three. It's very confusing. Right. This is right. very confusing. Uh, Tell so, me more about Russell. He's Russell also said, uh, wait, what? Hey, Laura, why so quiet tonight? He actually spelled quiet wrong, but uh, I, don't okay. think he, I don't think he meant why so quit tonight. That's, that's uh, fair. You've been talking about my character for years. Let's talk about yours, at Laura Moret. Uh, yeah. Believe it or not, she's not that stupid. At Laura Moret, from now on, worry about yourself and not others. Uh, Wow, you really have the playbook over here, huh? So yeah, that, there is a, Twitter, that's a, a lot of emotion involved. I, I want to say I feel like there was even more tweets last night, sure. but maybe uh, maybe some of them in the light of day uh, sure. were too inappropriate. Probably. But going back to what you, what you said, the, the tweet, you know, I, I never want to be the person who gets up on a soapbox mm-hmm. about a, any of these things. Right. I, I didn't. I really, 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 sure. I didn't think that the the massage thing was that bad. Sure, I mean, and 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 that is, that's a fair assessment of it as well. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I I think my assessment, I have a little bit more context when I make that assessment because I can say I know things from Mars, right? I know things from Vetus, and I know things from when she and I spent over a month together playing. Right? Oh well, you tell me, tell me this. So, did you? Were you ever? On the receiving end of a massage from Laura Moret with one T. There, with two T's. Oh, two T's. <laughs> Either Come or. On, tighten it up. Either or. Uh, I I don't remember. Uh, you, certainly, can, you can't recall? Certainly not to that extent. I would remember certainly if not I had ever extent. gotten a massage from anybody. No, I, I, I can tell you that she is a cuddler at night. Which I don't think is, is and, and I I am I pride myself on being fair in the context of Survivor being a cuddler at night you can't be guilty for that because mm-hmm. it's cold and it's part of people's social game I, look look I get it um, I will tell you she has a lot of CCs that are very uncomfortable to sleep next to when they're rubbing up on your arm CCs you know so that's well, the uh, plastic what? surgeon term uh, oh lots of CCs and when they're pressed up against your arm at night it's very hard it's very <laughs> uncomfortable uh, no but she she didn't exhibit that level of inappropriateness towards me towards um, you uh, why no, are, are your lats not good enough I've got pretty swole lats all right <laughs> uh, are they? Who has who has better lats, you or Otis? Well, you know what? We you had the pull up bar here. Yeah, it's and, a, I, I took and it down to Otis the door. did pull ups. No, he did not. 
Oh, he I thought that he did pull I ups. Did pull ups. Okay, and, and and that's how we we were going to figure it out in a pull up contest, yeah. which would be the greatest measurement of how well, effective one's lap. We could, we one's could put are. we could put the pull up bar back up, and then we, we can do a uh, wait for Otis we to can. come here, and then see if you could beat his record. We could do that. I, like I that. did. I believe I did seven pull ups that night. Okay. Um, nobody has once in my life ever commented on my lats. Well. I'm going to comment on them. They're great. I oh, can see them no, for the button up shirt. <laughs> stop, stop. Now you had to say it. I put you on the spot. Listen. Uh, no, I think I uh, RS has great lots. Yeah, uh, we got it. <laughs> what else? We got host, it. host the show, Rob. Come on. <laughs> so, All right. So uh, in Survivor Samoa, would you, would you say that was this a club in Laura's bag of I am going to try to use my sexuality to assert my way uh, with the other members in the tribe, uh, with a with you said not with a John Fincher, but what about with a Russell Swan, with I'm, a Eric Cordova, with answer, a Dave Ball? I'm going to answer your question with a statement that's unrelated to the to the context of your question, okay? But it'll okay. it'll answer it. It'll it will answer your question perfectly. Okay. I have it on very good word from someone that I trust, based on the right things, that prior. To blood versus water starting, Laura counseled her daughter by saying, Hey, Sierra, you know anything like that that happens out there is all in the context of the game and doesn't count, right? Yes. So I think that answers that. That tells you everything you need to know. So what that's what she told her daughter what who didn't have any experience going into it. Now, again, this is hearsay. Correct. This is hearsay. Correct. I'm 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 very fair in my assessment. I do not try to bury anybody. But what I you're just saying, told, what you're saying I is basically, as a rule, what happens in Survivor stays in Survivor. Not as a rule. This is Laura's rule that she's made for herself. Oh, okay, right. this was not. This was. But you've heard this secondhand. I have heard this from. I have heard this from someone that Sierra told us to. Okay, but again, that's. Not, I don't know if this is a court of law. I've got. Look, I I agree. It's not a court of law. Right. If, this it's is the in the court, court of public podcast, opinion. In the court of public opinion, it's I'd true. have to. I know. I know a lawyer Correct. named Brad Culpepper. And I, I know a lawyer named him. Bob Dog. <laughs> Bob Dog. Get Bob Dog on the phone. <laughs> I don't know if this is. I, I don't know if this is admissible evidence it's here. It's not in, admissible in, in court. I'm, I'm. I'm being very fair with the information and where it came from. Bang. Okay. All right. Does, so I think that answers your question. This is another blind item. Is it from the fan that wrote to you? No, on, it is from some. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is it's from someone that played Blood versus Water. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so let, let's get off the Laura. I'm sure we'll come. We'll come back. <laughs> sure. We'll come back to Laura. Sure. Um, <laughs> on this. Uh, you weren't kidding when you said we were going to talk about it for an hour. <laughs> well, I didn't. I didn't plan on it. This wasn't in my show notes. Let's talk about the tribe of returning veterans here, and so they are. I feel like in a similar situation to the Galoo tribe. Mm -hmm. On your season, sure. where the one tribe is being very decimated, right. and the other tribe is continuing to win and win and win, Correct. and very rarely go to the tribal council. They finally Correct. did after five episodes last night. Correct. When did you guys finally go to tribal council? You know, I don't remember. We... What was the name of that girl that you guys voted off? <laughs> uh, I, also, those... I also don't remember. Our first vote off? Yeah. You don't remember the name of the girl she... that you wrote down her name to vote she... her out? Hang on. Let me think about it for a second. She was so inconsequential. Uh... Uh, this is horrible, John. This is John. embarrassing. This is embarrassing. Uh, this is embarrassing. What's her you name? You lived with this person <laughs> for name? easily, name? easily for nine, ten days. What's her name? I. Ah, this is embarrassing. I, I. I just. I've had. When I say zero contact, that's not an exaggeration. I have had zero contact with her after the show. Uh, but yet you were still on a TV show with this person. Correct. This uh, is a big time move, John Fincher. This is. This is how much maybe Survivor means to me. Maybe it doesn't mean enough to me. I don't. Uh, I don't I know. know exactly what she looks like. Yes, um, you could. <laughs> if we had, if we had a podcast uh, sketch artist, you could describe her. Yes. Uh, what does her name start with? Do you right. know? I don't. I don't. I'm telling you, I don't remember. Okay. But I wasn't there. I'm one link away. I should know this. I agree with you that I should know the answer. You should to this know question. the answer. This is kind of. This looks kind of. This bad. is just something I haven't thought about for a very, very long time. <laughs> what was that girl's name? <laughs> all right, whatever, whatever. Forget yeah, it. Yeah, it's not. So, a lot of it. all right. So, 
how, is it bad for a tribe? Now, we know how it worked out for the Galoo group. Mm-hmm. Is it a bad thing to go so long into the game and not go to tribal council that much? I will, I will tell you that the answer is it depends. In okay. Brazil, the girls would say, depende. Okay? It depends. Now, it is a bad thing if you are not aware of where you are. Now, one of the things that I said when we, when we went to tribal council for the first time, and, and it became especially true immediately following the merge in Samoa, was the Galu tribe does not know where they are in the game. Because we at that point, we had gone to tribal council so few times, only twice, pre-merge. Um, and because of that, the things that they started doing were the wrong things to be doing in that stage of the game. Mm-hmm. And I think when you go through the mo- go go through the experience of going to tribal and going to tribal, you really realize wh- how deep you are in the game, and it and it and it helps you to make decisions that are appropriate for the position and the depth of of the game. And you can you can if you're smart and a savvy player, you can know where you are without having to go to tribal council that much. But in the case of Galu, the we didn't know where we were. Um, the majority of yeah. Galu. Because you can make a bunch um, of deals we with people, but Absolutely. until you know that bell rings, right. it, it's all thrown out the window. Right, right. exactly. Like, you, you can train for boxing all you want, right? But the second you're in the ring and you get hit the first time, you know the whole thing changes, right? And, and that's what Galu was doing. Everything was hunky-dory, rock and roll, smooth sailing, we're in cruise control, and then bang, all of a sudden they have to play this game that they weren't ready to play. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they didn't realize the pace at which it was going to get played. So for these, this tribe now, this isn't a bunch of rookies right. out in Samoa right. who don't have Russell Swan right. anymore. Right. And these, I think this vote shows that, right? I mean, the justification, the, 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 the small amount of justification that was given is we have an easy vote, but it's often, especially at the stage of the game that they were in, not the right play to take the easy vote, right? So we have these veteran players now and Rupert's wife. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Correct. And so An important distinction. They have not been to trial council for for a long time. They yeah. they finally go. Um, do you think that they continue just to have smooth sailing now without Laura Moret, or do you think that now there starts to be some fractures? I I think that as a as the game progresses, as you get deeper, people start to consider more options and they start con- to consider those options differently. And because of that, you have fractures. I mean, you, you, every, all, every single one of these returning players knows that only one person can win this game. And for one person to win this game, it means that all other 19 players will lose. Mm-hmm. And they know that. And they're loved ones. And, yeah, they know that. And, and so I think what happens is, is you... you if, if knowing that, right, you really start to make moves based on that. And as you go deeper and deeper into the game, you have to start making more and more strategic plays. Um, mm-hmm. And if you're really smart, you're making strategic plays from the beginning. All right, so last season, we had somewhat of a similar scenario. We had fans versus favorites, and we Correct. had all of these returning players, and they're just kicking ass, and they're knocking everybody, all of the fans out of the game. They're getting right. decimated. Right. Um, and then, there's, then there was a switch. Right. And then during the switch... You know, some things may or may not have changed, and then they got back together after the merge. And I feel like the thing... Yasmin was her name. Yasmin. Yasmin, there you go. <sighs> Poor <Perfect>. Yasmin. <laughs> Keep going. I, I should tell you that I'm underqualified because I didn't watch last season. Uh, this is really the first season that I've watched in a while and really focused on it. Last season, I was kind of... There oh, well, but, me, keep, but keep going about the trouble. Then, uh, so you don't mind if I spoil last season for you? Go ahead. I, I, okay. I know who uh, I know who won. All right. So last season, it was Corinne mm-hmm. was the one that got antsy. Right. With the uh, with the group of all of the she couldn't take Philip anymore. She right. wanted she wanted to get make something big happen. Right. Do you think there's somebody in this group of returning veterans that's going to be the Corinne that's going to want to right. start to shake things up on their own and take somebody out? Well, we we got the hint right that it's on Tyson's mind that mm-hmm. sooner or later Aris will have to get voted off. But he didn't act on it, and he and and, and I think he would be hard pressed at this stage in the game to get enough momentum behind a play like that. Also, I think Tyson has learned. Tyson, I actually met Tyson for the first time a couple weeks ago. Yeah, what'd you think? Um, uh, I like him. I like great guy. I, I, I think he's great. I think Rachel's great. Uh, very nice couple. Um, but Tyson is not an idiot, uh, and Tyson has learned from from his mistakes in the past, right? And and that was trying to make some moves and 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 not having them work out for him. So I think Tyson knows when he's in a good spot. I think he, I think his read socially is accurate. Um, socially, he's a savvy player. 
Um, so I think he, I, I don't think he's going to try to gun down anyone prematurely. Uh, I, I think he's going to be much more cautious about it. Um, but uh, I, I think, yeah, the, someone is going to have to step up, right? I, I, I don't think, what I, what, I, what I don't think will happen is that after the merge, all the newbies are going to get voted off, this alliance of five returning players is going to go all the way to the end, and then the three that think they're also in the top three are going to get voted off. That's not going to happen. So eventually, yeah, someone's going to do it. Who, who will it be? You know, who do you have in your five-person alliance, I guess? It has to be one of those people, right? It has to be Aris. It has to be Jervis. It has to be Tyson. It has to be Tina, or it has to be... Who's number five? Monica. Monica. No, Monica's not in the five-person alliance, is she? Yeah. She is. Oh, she, she is. is. That's okay. why Otis so, wanted to vote correct, out Laura correct, to go. Right, right, okay. So that said, Jervis and Tina are both very tight with Aris. That only leaves Tyson. But for Tyson to execute that move, he's going to need either, either, either Jervis or Tina, or he's going to have to do it really early pre-merge with the other, when he has a lot of other numbers coming from other places. Uh I don't know. I, I know Jervis won't vote out Aris. I, don't, I think I Tina, Tina and will Otis vote out are lo locked at the hip. Absolutely. I don't uh, think Tina is... That's her. They say, hey, we're the, both the winners. Right. We need to go to the end together. Right. And she's not, that's her new Colby. I, I think... So So then, if it's if, if it, it might be Tyson. And if it's not Tyson, the only person left is Monica. But if Monica tries to do that, and let's say Brad Culpepper gets back in the game after Redemption Island... Vetus is still in a position where he likes Brad and wants to work with Brad and sees his end game involving Brad. So Vetus isn't going to let that happen. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I don't know. I mean, unless Aris gets voted off pre-merge, I don't know exactly where he would go. I think the problem with the Coconut Bandits, if they, if they were to try to make a move the against Coconut Otis Bandits are Jervis and, and Tyson, Tyson, right? I feel like they don't have enough people who are lo more loyal to them right. than they are to Otis. Well, here's the interesting part about having an all-star season is you don't necessarily need that, right? All you have to do is have enough people that go, holy shit, this guy's a massive threat, mm -hmm. right? And, 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 and maybe they're loyal to Otis, but maybe they don't feel the reciprocity, right? Um, so I think, it, I think it can happen, but I agree with you that it's doubtful, right? You said in the beginning of the show that you, there was a lot of people on this season that you had some interaction with. Who else do you know from this season? Uh, where's the Where's the cast list? Um, I, I would just say that I know the Bushkowskis brothers the best. I've spent the most amount of time with them, yeah. both pre-season and during the season. I've never met Cat in my life. I know Hayden. Yeah, you know, uh, you, but you know Hayden, but you don't I, know Cat. Uh, correct. I know Hayden pre-Hayden and Cat. Oh. Yeah, I uh, I hung out in Hayden, with Hayden in Texas, mm -hmm. um, and uh, actually drove with him uh, up to Dallas from Houston with him and Lane, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, hung out now, with him in Houston proceeding. Now there. I feel like I've heard Stephen Fishback tell this story. Stephen Fishback has been in a car with him and Lane without a lot of socializing. I was gonna, <laughs> gonna, I was gonna say I feel like I heard the story with right. Stephen Fishback, but it wasn't you. It was JT in the car. Uh, fair. Yeah, I think that I think that Stephen Fishback was in the car with with JT and Hayden. I, I think that. Happened. So this was two separate car rides. Two separate cars. This is a car ride in October, maybe four years ago, yeah. and it's me, Hayden, Lane, mm -hmm. and Eliza actually. And Eliza Whoa. and I are going up to Dallas to watch to attend actually Monday Night Football. Yeah, the Giants were coming uh, to play the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so we got a lift up there from uh, from Lane because Lane lives in Fort Worth and and Hayden and Lane had just got off the show together. Yeah. Um, but I know Hayden. He's a nice guy. He's a, by the way, Hayden is a threatening player. He has some social skills and he's very very nonchalant and very very cool and has a way of just saying, hey, I just don't want to lose. Just keep me around. And people people take that bait. By the way, did you and I play blackjack with? Hayden uh, in Temecula could be. I know I, I, no, that we be. didn't think of it. We did some I, gambling that weekend. I think huh? I, I do. I feel like I I remember a blackjack table and it was me, you, and Hayden, and there may or may not have been one other person. I I, I definitely remember that. I, I not think distinctly, so. but I remember that in a blur of other things. But yeah, yeah. Uh, Hayden's a good guy. I like Hayden. And, and a dangerous. I, mean, I want to say Benry might have been the fourth person. Ben, that <laughs> seems appropriate. <laughs> Benry's doing well, by the way. Benry, what, what does he do? He's moved back to Colorado. He's got uh, he's got a great job. He's like loving. He's from Colorado. Dispensary? Re no, reconnecting. That's the other guy. Uh, Jim Rice. Jim, right? Um, but reconnected, I think, with his roots, and he's a Colorado boy, and he's having a great time. I talked to him on the phone a few weeks ago. Well, what and, does he do? He's working. Uh, he's working for a company that I um, I don't want to blow this here. 
working for a company that I don't know sets up a lot of big type events, but not that sounds cheesy like an event coordinator type thing. But it's much more interesting than that, and the caliber. So of you're events you're okay with it. potentially secondhand hearsay information that Laura Moret may or may not have told her daughter, but you don't want to get what Benry does for a job wrong. <laughs> I just want to make I, sure. I, I Listen, I tell the truth. <laughs> if it's hearsay, I'll tell you it's hearsay. I don't remember exactly what Benry's doing, but I know he's very happy ha, happy doing it, and it seems very cool and entertaining. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I didn't think we were going to get to Benry in this podcast. Yeah, here we go. Look <laughs> at us. There, there you go. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think, look at the board. Anybody else that you know? Colton? Colton, I don't know. I think that's actually it. So I met Tyson and I met Rachel. Um, I can tell you this. So you, you I, sort of oh, over-reported the amount of people that you know. No, no, no. I, I, I don't know that I did that because when you said when you started getting into it, I was like, wait a second, who do I really know here? Yeah. I will tell you this. I have never met Candace. Mm -hmm. If I have, it hasn't been for more than a handshake or something, maybe at the 10-year reunion. But a lot of people dislike her. And yeah. I kind of I, I kind of like her. I think she's a fierce competitor. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you could say that she's a little bit bitchy, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but I like her, and I like John. I, just, I, I had one interaction with Candace in real life, yeah. and, I, and I had forgotten about this, but right. the 10-year reunion party, yeah. I met her, yeah. she was super sweet, yeah. she, was very, she was very, very nice, yeah. and then I talked to her on the phone today, and she was lovely. Yeah, she seems to me like a, like a Brad Culpepper type Why competitor. Why does Candace have a bad reputation? I, you know, I haven't watched all her seasons. I know she really got aggressive in the season 20 final tribal, right? I think that was... You know, I, I, I don't remember. I think some people found that to be off-putting. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I think she, like, apologized on the after show or something. Okay, she that. apologized. Uh, so I'm willing to, you know, I, 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 I like her. I think she's a strong competitor, and I think she really wants to win, and she's a tough girl, and I think that's uh, those are all attractive qualities. How about some of the new players? You like Dr. John? Dr. John, I like. You know, I think a lot of people are giving him a real bad, uh, uh, sort of unfairly picking on the guy, right? Like, uh, you know, oh, he's a wimp, he's controlled by his wife, blah, 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 blah. I, you know, this is the type of thing you'll never really understand the full dynamics, but he seems like a nice, capable guy, and he's an intelligent guy, and and that's just the way he is. He's from Vermont. You know, he's got a really laid-back personality. Um, you know, he's he's not as outspoken as, as his wife is, but, you know, I think that's fine. I don't think uh, he gets pushed around by his wife. I think he's a smart, intelligent, capable guy. I think he's a tough, strong competitor as well. Uh, and how about the uh, Caleb-Colton pair? Uh, did it bother you when Caleb quit? You know, people ask... People are very offended personally when people when other people I quit. I feel like it doesn't bother you that much. It doesn't bother me. If, if, if you want to quit... Quit. You know what I mean. And, and and if anyone tells you that it really bothers them, then they've never been in a season where people were, you know, contemplating quitting. I'd I'd always rather beat someone than have them quit. Um, but uh, you know, if you're gonna quit, quit. If you can't, if you can't handle the heat, quit. You know, that's fine with me. What about Caleb? Yeah. Caleb making some moves, huh? Making some power plays. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how long he will last, but. Certainly, if you can, if you think that your tribe is going to continue to lose, and you think that you're in a bad spot because of Brad, and you have the opportunity to eliminate him from the equation, then there's an argument that it's the right play. Yeah. However, post merge, people are going to catch wind of that, and people are going to know exactly what happened and the way that you did it, and and you really went to bat for two of the weakest players that are going to be around post merge if your play is successful. Right now, he could he could be in in Texas. We would say he could be in the catbird seat. And he could swing back with Vetus and Ara. That's or, a sorry, Texas with, quote? I think so. Um, if you're in the catbird seat, you're in control. You Yankees don't know that, huh? Right. But the, I'm a Mets fan. If, if he goes back and he and he hangs tough with Hayden and Vetus now and eliminates the two-week girls, he could be fine. He could repair his relationship with them. I think we've already heard Vetus say that it's going to be hard to trust him in the long term going forward. But maybe for him, it was the right play right there. You know what I mean? Um I wouldn't be surprised if Caleb gets voted out on the next episode, and I wouldn't be surprised if Caleb is makes the final it to the three. end. Exactly, exactly. That's exactly <laughs> the way really, that I feel. I cannot get a good read on him. That's exactly He's got the way a good that I poker feel. Poker face. Yeah. Stephen Fishback and I debated this last night in the scene where Vetus is on the boat, on the boat with Caleb, flirting with him, just really and, charming and, and, him. And Vetus is like, uh, "Oh man, hey, your skin looks great. Yeah, like, where'd glowing, you get that huh? shirt? That's perfect. a great. That's a great shirt. Perfect. Uh, like, boy, that stubble is coming. Is coming just in perfect, perfect, huh? Yeah." And Steven felt like, oh my God, Caleb is seeing right through that. He wasn't buying that at all. And I was like, 
what? I think Caleb is really eating this up. Mm-hmm. The guy has no poker face. I, you know, I think. He's, or I'm sorry, he has a great, great poker, poker face. face. I think what we can say is that he's got some legitimate, <laughs> tangible skills and talents for playing this game. Yeah, I think I, he we has. We can't that. read him. I think he has that. And what's really interesting about the situation that Caleb is in now is a lot of people, a lot of people are really put off by like by like cocky, confident players, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, especially in Survivor because they find a lot of people that are either mediocre or, or, or different than that. But sometimes, for a lot of people, they perform better when they have a little bit of that swagger. Swagger. Swag. And, and, and when you see him leaning back, he's got his hat that he's dipped in the water like he's on the Alabama yeah. Gulf Shore or something, and he's getting a little bit of that, and mm-hmm. I'm really interested to see if that helps him perform, if he's one of those guys that performs better when he's feeling like he's when he's feeling really capable and confident. You know? Yeah, I'm telling you, I, sometimes I look at Caleb and I say, like, this guy looks like he could be like a 25 year old Richard Hatch. He yeah, looks absolutely. Like, if you he's got do, the look. He's got. He's, he's got, got the, the look. He's got the look. Mm-hmm. I think he could play him. I've said for years they need to make the Richard Hatch st- biopic. Right. Right. And he's starring Caleb. Yeah, yeah, Caleb could start. I agree. Um, all right, so uh, before I get to, I have lots of questions here. For, let's for do the it. Listeners of the podcast. Great. Uh, let me pull one one thing. Let's go back to Laura. Oh, one, one, one more thing. Uh, let me know. ask you a question, Rob. Sure. I don't want to turn the I don't want to turn the tables. I, on it's you. always good when it happens. This maybe I, I I didn't think about this, so it's not going to be as well thought out as it, I, this is really just off the cuff. But what are your views? You you said that you thought that you didn't think it was that bad or whatever. What do you really think? Let's give me a really raw, unfiltered opinion on your reaction about the about the Laura sure. and Otis thing. I I don't think it was like I really don't think that Laura was like you know this was like the verge of a showmance. I right. think that Laura felt like hey I'm going to you know maybe I'll use my womanly wiles right. on. On Otis right. a bit, and if that helps, you know, we talked about Edna from Survivor South Pacific. Edna Ma. Edna Ma, who did the same sort of thing with Coach mm-hmm. back in Survivor uh, South Pacific, and right. she was married also. And I don't remember people making such a big fuss over that. Right. Uh, and maybe it was what Laura was saying in the in the confessional, or maybe it was the line about, "Hey, I've been married twenty years." This is how I learned this stuff. Right. Um. But I didn't think it was it was that big a deal. Like I didn't see her touching any inappropriate places right. or anything like that, or like trying to like kiss sure. Otis on the neck right. or anything like that. I feel like if if that was if that was Nicole on Survivor, this was a, right. you know blood versus water, and Nicole's on the other tribe sure. and she's doing that to somebody sure. else. Uh, that's probably gonna piss me off. Right. I'm not gonna I'm not right. gonna like that. Right. I'm not gonna like that. And that's the point. Right. But. Because who's more important to you than your family and your mm-hmm. wife or your husband, yeah. right? Who 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 is more affected by your behavior? Yeah, right. But I don't feel I don't think in my heart of hearts right. I don't believe that Laura is like, oh man, I gotta get, I right. want to get with Otis. For sure, and, and, and gonna, that's not what I'm yeah. saying, right? I I I just think that that just like you said, I think I think that's the important thing to me that if if, if you got someone back home watching that who's gonna be your partner, mm-hmm. potentially for a long time, you know what I mean? Uh. uh it's not the way that I would choose to sort of conduct myself, and, and, and that's not the way I would choose to behave. And I think it's further highlighted because Aris himself was uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Aris is trying to... Let me tell you what is going on in Aris's head. Aris is trying to get out of this situation where Laura's all over him, but he's like, how do I do this in a way Without that doesn't piss her off? off. Yeah. And I think ultimately him taking a risk to remove her from the game at least from his tribe, right? He's not totally finished from the game. It, it is a real effort to do that. Is I gotta get out of here, right? And, and and he doesn't really know how to do it. It's not like you can tell someone stop, and and not have their feelings or emotions affected, and mm-hmm. and, and then everyone becomes a variable and a wild card, and you don't want to play in that game, right? All right. Anyway, go back to your All question. Right. So um, I have a uh, an an article here from preseason Survivor. Okay. Uh, written by the great Gordon Holmes. Great. Now, great Gordon Holmes. Uh, he went. And he spoke. <laughs> he spoke with all of these survivors. Uh, so this beforehand. is this is a in, in the five days leading up to Survivor on site. Yes. This is one of those press interviews. This is uh, penned by Gordon Holmes on September sixth, uh, two thousand thirteen. Sure. Uh, in his interview with Laura and Sierra, uh, he asked Laura, "You received one of the all-time harsh Survivor lessons in Samoa. You were up. I think it was eight to four at the merge over Foa Foa, and then." Uh, bit by bit, your alliance ate itself. You went after Eric Cardona, then the rocket scientist, 
who I don't know if Gordon Holmes remembered the name. I think he may have pulled a uh, Yolanda on, <laughs> on you. Uh, he refers to you as the rocket scientist, and Laura interjects, uh, John. And Gordon says, yes, John Fincher. Okay, so he does. He, he, knows, does he knows me. Uh, and Laura says, uh, he got his degree in the mail, <laughs> parenthetically laughs. You're looking for a response? <laughs> uh, my my cred my credentials are uh, are too strong, and my education is too formal to uh, be critiqued by. What Laura. does that mean? He got, his and... he got his degree in the mail. Look, I, I'm not going to contrast. You know, I will contrast my situation with Laura's situation. I don't know where Laura went to college. I don't even know if she went to college. I, I don't. There's nothing wrong if she didn't, but. Most people get their degree in the mail that went to college. That true? Newsflash, yeah. yeah. You can, so you can't like can flash you, people at commencement. Can you, you know print what out I mean? a PDF now? Uh, who knows what's going on these days? But I can tell, I can tell you and your listeners, I guess, and, and maybe Laura if she's listening, that my degree in mechanical and aerospace engineering came from the same institution that one Otis Bushkowskis's degree oh. came from. So now what's up? That's the company that I keep. Yes. Okay, uh, Aris and I went to the same university, and uh, yeah, and he probably got his degree in the mail too. Okay, so. well, let's, we'll we will follow up on that story. Sure. And tell you now, when you back in Survivor Samoa mm -hmm. on the infamous vote where you f you changed your vote. Oh, you didn't use the word flip. I see that your mouth was, <laughs> and then it went to change. Keep going. You changed you changed your vote. Correct. And uh, you decided to vote with Foa Foa against Galu. Who was the person that went home that night? Laura. Now, is this where this all comes from, this an this animosity? <coughs> she's saying, she's talking about you, and, and Gordon Holmes isn't even, isn't even asking about any, you know, it's like she can't wait to get in a shot about sure. you. Obviously, there's no love lost for you with her. Right. Is this all over that you flipped your vote in Survivor Samoa? Uh, I don't know. I don't know how people like that behave or manage their emotions. You know, I don't know. I, uh, I can tell you that she inaccurately believes that I had the power to vote her off, right? That if, let's just say whenever I wanted to, I could just have lightning strike and Laura but would be voted you off. I didn't stayed, have that power in Samoa. If you stayed with Galu... Would mm -hmm. Laura have gone home that night? Had I stayed with Galu and drawn a rock, it is statistically impossible that Laura would have gone home. So, had I drawn a rock, Laura would not have had to draw, draw so a rock. So, if you would have put Laura's interests ahead of your own, correct. she could have won Survivor Samoa. That's correct. And had I put Laura's interests ahead of my own, I would have been playing incorrectly. You were selfish. <laughs> you were selfish. Strategic. Yeah. Uh, so let's. I'm not gonna. I, I can answer these questions all day long, right? I'm totally comfortable with the play. Um, you know, my end game strategy involved Jason. Uh, Mick had immunity that day. Natalie was the other person in the tie. That only leaves Jason and Russell to choose a rock from Foa Foa, who's who's potentially going home. Uh, I I absolutely need Jason. So that means that only Russell could could pull the rock and go home. So odds are, by the way, odds are a, a Galu member goes home. Who would I rather pick out of all the Galu people to go home? Sorry, Laura, you did this to yourself. You put yourself in this position because of your behavior, and and you know her treatment of Shamba was a large part of that that she doesn't acknowledge. And, and it's not my I'm not on a crusade to get her to acknowledge that. But regardless of whether she knows this, her her treatment of Shambo, her her just completely unnecessarily cruel treatment of Shambo, resulted in the position that she was in of having all those votes thrown in her direction. Let me ask you this. Let's talk about Vitas. Vitas did exactly the same right, thing well, that I did. You're, you're jumping at, you're jumping oh, ahead. Oh, I'll, I'll let you drive. I like, I like the pace at which you go. You're, okay. you're jumping ahead. ahead. I have that go question ahead. for you uh, from... Just go, next question. Don't, don't, let's not jump around. Stick to your... Uh, well, since you, no, since you brought it up. Natural uh, transition. Here, this is sure. from Thomas Forsey, uh, who asked, although the situation was different, were you annoyed that Vitas was able to make the strategically sound decision to avoid pulling rocks without damaging his game or being verbally abused like you or Cochrane? I, now, in this, just to rehash, sure. last week it was a 3-3 tie at Tribal Council. Correct. Uh, nobody had immunity. Correct. Uh, between Brad and Sierra. Correct. And so it was then Brad and Sierra can't vote. It was a 2-2 tie. Vetus changes his vote. Correct. And there is no backlash against Vetus. That we saw. That we saw. Right. But it did not appear. Uh, you would think 
based on an episode where we're looking at uh, falling toenails. Yeah. If there was a backlash against Vetus, do you think we would we would see it? Sure, sure. I, I don't know what the answer yeah. is, but sure, sure. But are you it seemed the, like there was room for that. Are sure. you under the impression there was a backlash? I, listen, I, I, I'm not going to say that if I'm Hayden, I'm not thinking, wow, I was the only one out there. I was out there totally by myself voting uh, with Brad, and Vetus changed, and I didn't see that coming, and now I'm completely exposed, and maybe I'm now I'm more exposed than Vetus was, and maybe I sense a little bit of inequity there. Um, maybe that is the case. Um, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, I, I think the specific question was, am I sort of mad that Vitas was able to so elegantly maneuver his way through that situation? No, I, I feel like the um, it's not so much about Vitas versus you. I feel like uh, how where is the outrage uh, against Vitas right, for I, being I, a person I, who switched? Where, I will, why I, are the Brad Culpepper fans? I will answer. Not... I will answer that question by by reminding you of something that I said in the beginning of this very podcast, Rob. Culpepper is a competitor. Okay. Laura is not a competitor of the same caliber as Culpepper, okay? Culpepper takes it on the chin. Mm -hmm. Culpepper understands that he's responsible for his position in the game and responsible for Caleb going, I'm throwing my vote at you, girls, if you want to do it. He understands that his behavior resulted in that as a consequence, right? Now what happens after that? Culpepper knows that he's personally responsible. He doesn't expect Vetus to put his own head on the chopping block for him. Not mm -hmm. at all. So Culpepper's a competitor. He takes it on the chin. So you win some, you lose some. By the way, he goes to Redemption Island, focus on the next thing. What does Gretzky play, say? The next, the most important play is the next play. You focus on the next thing, and you keep going. In Laura's case, she doesn't have the experience competing at, the, at, at a high level, and she doesn't know how to, how to take it on the chin like that and move on. So there's a difference there. Um, and I, and I, think the, I think in my situation... The people that were left were also a, a different mix, right? Who's left with Vitas? Hayden and the two girls. Well, he's been snuggling with with Sierra at night. Kate, Katie, right, is kind of a non-factor. Let's let's just say I don't mean to put that in a bad way, but the edit hasn't shown us a lot of what she's up to. And Hayden, who he has a very you know working you know tight functioning working relationship with. The people that were left with me were a little bit different, right? We had Monica, who is very tight with Laura. And we had Dave that was just so happy to be part of a social group in Galoo for the first time in his life. And we had Brett, who had like a pre-game existing relationship with Laura, right? Wait, hold on, hold so, on. That Brett had a pre-game... I think they went to the same church. In fact, I don't think they went to the same church. They went to the same church in Oregon. They connected on that out there. Okay. Uh, but they did not actually... They weren't actually think friends. They, I don't think... I. I I don't I don't know the extent of the relationship beforehand, yeah. but they went to the I, same I'd church. Never heard Maybe they before. knew some more people, you know, whatever. So I think that the situation was a little bit more complex. There were certainly more people involved with my, with my move, um, and 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 by the way, I I made the move uh, looking forward. I didn't just make the move in that moment, right? I made the move looking forward, and I said, well, the only way for me to go out next or in the next two votes is to get votes from Dave, Brett, and Monica, and if they do that they will get eliminated from this game. As it turned out, they did that, and consequently, and directly resultant from that move, mm -hmm. they, were vote, they were voted out. Dave was voted out next, Monica was voted out after him, and Brett was voted out the second he didn't win immunity. So you, it's tough to play with guys that are willing to sacrifice their, their you know, survivor uh, health. You know, well, and, spite is very it. powerful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right, so let's get into some more questions. Uh, our own Jessica Frey. I love Jessica. Hey, Jessica. How uh, are you? The great Jessica Frey. She wants to know, who fr fr who is this season's poser? Uh, and to make it hard, you can't answer uh, Laura Moret. So that's, who who is the fair. poser of this season? You know, I think I think Hold I'm on, gonna I give to... a real witty response here. It's Vetus. Vetus is a poser. Hold on, let me see if I have if I have the clip <clears throat> of uh, of Jeff Probst here. People <laughs> really love that one, huh? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, they do. Uh, you should have this queued up. Do we not have like live producers somewhere in the in the background? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, it's like a, a one man band. Let me see if I have. Uh, I think I have it on my on my YouTube channel. Uh, you talk about Vetus being a poser. Let me see if well, I have it. Well, look, we have an epic. I mean, Vetus is a yoga master. Okay, um, I I practice Vetus with yoga. You know, uh, once or twice a, a a week when I can. Wait, you, um, you do yoga with Vetus? Yeah, Vetus is great. He teaches uh, Tuesday, Thursday nights at Yoga Works on Main Street in Santa Monica. And he oh teaches my God. he teaches every day actually. He teaches Monday, Monday, Wednesday, 
morning at Power Yoga, and I think Saturday and Sunday morning as well, and a Friday night class at Yoga. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, like you're stalking him. No, I just have a really good memory. <laughs> like I said, the first vote out from Galu. Is <laughs> 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 Let's say I, I want to make sure that I'm that I'm servicing my people here that are uh, sending in questions as well. All right. So, but why is Vita a poser? Vitas is a poser because getting called a poser for no reason is a is a compliment, I suppose, right? I like Vitas, and Vitas was doing an epic handstand. So didn't we get that yoga pose, play on words, double oh, meaning? Oh, okay, all right. Vitas right. is a poser. Yeah. You want me to give? How can I possibly give a better response to that? That was I guess, perfect. I guess so. Um, I've got an important question here coming in from Hugh. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see if I let me see if, if this uh, if this works. All right, here we go. This is Jeff Probst. Let's see if. Uh, no, sorry, they're gonna they're gonna run an ad on YouTube. You guys can find that on the Survivor Samoa yeah. Jeff Probst <laughs> cast run assessment Just on YouTube. Just hit mute, and, and I think you'll never have to listen to the first five seconds of the ad, right? And then you hit the little button. Okay, let's see. See, we're we're you know we try we try to do uh, crazy stuff. Is this stuff the part where I line. put my headphones on? You could you could put your you headphones told me on. Going to come a point in time. When I yeah. Was okay. Well, yeah. So on. this isn't this isn't quite the part. But oh, this is answer, great. I can hear you in the headphones. Real yeah. professional setup. Uh, answer there. the question though for real. Who's the, who is this season's poser? I, I said the answer is Venus. I think that's the answer. Yeah, he's also not just because he does yoga poses. I I I don't know what it really means <laughs> to be a poser in the context. Who's of Who's trying to be something that they're not? Undeservedly. Uh, certainly, I wasn't. So that's the way I did oh, that. Here we go. Here, this should this should work. Uh, Let's see. No, I think they, for, for whatever reason it's not. It's uh, sorry, false alarm. Not not working. Everybody, go to down, go to the, uh, five five minutes and fifty four seconds of the Survivor <laughs> Samoa Jeff Probst cast assessment. <clears throat> yeah, sorry about that. Uh, who 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 do I? Here, keep the headphones on. I'll, oh, I'll play I'll, I'll play the uh, the the clip next. Great. All right, Michael Graga wants to know. At around the 1 minute and 12 seconds mark on your Caramoan podcast with Otis, uh, you, he mentioned that he uh, would give or receive a massage if he would win a fishy. Uh, so we have to go back and take a look at this. So what are the chances that Otis is talking about massages on Survivor? All right, so this is from, uh, this is from March 21st, 2013. Mm -hmm. uh, here is uh, Stealth R Us. <laughs> I want to go back on Survivor. Good for just, I want to go back on Survivor just so that I'm eligible for a fishy. Yeah. I I'll, I will give massages all day long if it means I get a fishy. Whoa. Because I know that 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 was. That's how you get one. Well, apparently Jeff got oh, one for that. <laughs> well, the way he handled Brandoni. Good for Jeff. Uh, so, <laughs> did, uh, is the fish back gave probes to fishy? He did for when Brandon Hans uh, quit the game, and, oh. and Jeff Ross gave him massage. Okay. So was this premeditated? Otis from won Otis? a fishy. For, with, I don't know whether it was for the massage, but he just won a fishy today. He won a fishy. Right? He said, "I only want to go back on Survivor so I can win him a fishy, and I would give a massage to get a fishy executed to perfection." And ironically, he gets a fishy for getting a massage and voting off the masseuse. Epic. Well, that's, that's, that's perfect. That, and, uh, yeah, I don't know if uh, Michael Graga was just sitting on that one, waiting for that, but uh, it comes in with the perfect uh, time. Good job. I will good say job. Aris is the king of strategically uh, uh, making people feel close to him through physical activities, whether it's massage or a little yoga and stretching or, you know, who you're sleeping next to or whatever. Aris is very aware of, of the uh, change in the relationship that can happen because of doing physical activities with people. So, Alex Isaac wants to know, uh, does Fincher agree with your Laura B. to Shambo comparison? All right, so here's why I... Tell me the comparison. Well, I I, on Survivor No One last night, I said, you know what, I, didn't, I wasn't crazy about this move. Okay. That I think I would have voted off Laura B. and kept Laura M. around. I felt like it was a little too cute mm -hmm. because you, when you say, oh, okay, Laura B., we can get rid of her anytime. Sure. And we'll just keep her around until whenever when we feel like sure. it. And then that person sometimes becomes the Shambo. Mm -hmm. And then the Shambo is sort of a free agent. Mm -hmm. When you get to the point when there's a merge, mm -hmm. they start feeling like all of the new players... When and, and again, she is the one person who's not like the others. Mm -hmm. She is the one person who would probably feel more at home with the loved ones. Mm -hmm. uh, if we merge... Isn't she an easy person that's going to flip over and vote against the tribe of veterans? Uh, 
Yeah, but that's an absolute legitimate possibility. Yeah, that you have a real, real possibility and a threat if you're on the returning player's tribe. Yeah, that you need to consider absolutely. So who is so who's the bigger threat to have still in the game, Laura M or Laura B? I I think in this case I would I would contrast Laura B uh, and Shambo by saying that Shambo is more of a savvy, keen, aware player. There's certain things that Shambo does. Shambo is better than Laura B. Yeah, I would say that based on what I've seen out of Laura B. I would say that. Um, Shambo is fiercely loyal, uh, and, and when she went over to Russell, Russell realized, oh my God, she's gonna be loyal to me forever. I knew with with Shambo that she would never write my name down. Um, so I, I don't think Laura can induce the same type of comfort and confidence in the relationship that she could potentially form with anyone out there, whether it's a, you know, because now Rupert's gone, right? So whether it's a returning player or a non-returning player, um, to me, to me, she doesn't bring the same offering uh, a, a, as a as a Shambo would to a to a newly formed post-merge alliance. Shambo and Rupert Boneham kind of have the same haircut. True. Yeah. True. All right, so from Scott Chupak, he Shambos wants to know... is better. Yes, yes. Uh, Scott Chupak says, uh, are you all in for Survivor Robs versus Johns, and uh, who do you want on your tribe, Bobby John or John Robert? Now, are you aware of, of Survivor Johns versus Robs? So I, the first I heard of this, I'm going to be honest, was whatever a couple days ago whenever you mentioned it yeah. as, as a little teaser for this podcast. Well, this is so, one of the big big rumors. Survivor 30 coming up is that they want to do how Survivor. How could they not do that? Survivor, no girls Robs, makes for great TV. Survivor Robs versus Johns. Well, no, right. R, uh, RC is is out there. <laughs> What's RC's? She's uh, Roberta okay. uh, Christine. Okay. Uh, and I want to say that I feel like there's some there's some girl. That's uh, that's in, that's in, I feel like this is a second girl. I don't know. Um, but uh, but anyway, so are you are you down for this? I am down. Okay. <laughs> uh, who who are you aligning with? I well I don't I don't know that there's enough Johns or enough uh, uh, enough Robs. But I, if you're playing, the, yeah, I don't have the whole cast list. If you're playing, we're on the other. Uh, we're on opposite tribe. Yeah. But after after the yeah. I don't want the other Johns yeah. and Robs to see this. But after the merge, you know it's right. You know, right. Uh, look, I don't know. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting uh, right, Jean let me Robert some, yet. Let me throw some Johns But out. I let like me... Bobby John okay. a lot. I've had a lot of good times with him. I think he's a great guy. Uh, Jonathan Penner. You work don't with know, him? Don't know him, but he seems like a savvy guy and someone that you could work with. He understands the game, and that's my prerequisite to uh, to work with you. What about uh, John Cochran? I could work with John. I like John. John and I actually had dinner the night he won. Actually, or the or the very next day or something after. Look he at won. you. Uh, yeah, look at me. He's a nice guy. I like John. How about Johnny Fairplay? Fairplay, <laughs> Fairplay is a fun guy. Say what you want about Fairplay. I know you wouldn't, but uh, you know I'm sure lots of people are like, ah, Fairplay is crazy. Fairplay is a fun guy who took took Survivor and did exactly what he should have done. Can I say both? Can I say he is crazy and he is, he is a fun guy? Absolutely, you absolutely, can. and I would agree with that if you were to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> how how about uh, John Carroll? Now we had him on the podcast recently. Yeah, I've never. He was not. He was not a fan of yours. I've uh, never met John Carroll, and but I see there's this this there's whole a feud. Twitter thing. There's a feud. But I, don't I have to be participating for it to be a feud? Jeff Pittman writes. Do you have any plans to change your Twitter handle to at Fifth Survivor John? Listen, I have zero plans. I didn't even know that there were four Johns before me. So, well, this is part of the problem. Now, John Carroll was on yep. Survivor Marquesas. Mm -hmm. He joined Twitter. Right. He was ready to be Survivor John. That's taken. Seats, Sorry. T seats taken. Sorry. Somebody is squatting Sorry. on... I'm not Survivor squatting. I'm, I, am, I am a Survivor, and my name is John. It's, so, I would argue that it's my spot. So you would not, you would not give up Survivor John on Twitter what? to John Carroll. Let me ask you this. Who this is, is at first That's Survivor what I was going to say. Is, what is his name? Because I think that's what it is. I think that's hilarious. At 1ST, I think, first Survivor John. I'm going to answer this question this way. I would love to meet John because it sounds like he has a great sense of humor. Um, I, I did not. I think he's kind of pissed. I did not. I don't think he's genuinely pissed. I think he I think must he's be joking, a little pissed. Right? I think he's a little pissed. Um, is, was John the first John ever on Survivor? I believe so. Really? Yes. Okay, fair. That's why he's first. Survivor I, that's John. right. I, I, and that's what I was going to question if that weren't if that weren't yeah. true. Then there was a John I would on say, Survivor Thailand. I would say, listen, Twitter has been around for a while. If you don't get, you know, if you don't get on the Instagram and the news in the new social media as they come out and and, and lock up your handles. Are you squatting I on Survivor I did not, John? I did not select Survivor John as my handle. That was created for me. 
by a neighbor mm -hmm. when I was on Survivor. I did not select that. Are license. you squatting on Survivor, John, on other social media networks? No, only on Survivor. But I'm actually, I would say no because I'm not squatting on it. Uh, uh, or sorry, only on Twitter. But I'm not squatting. Uh, it's mine. That's okay. mine. Uh, John Cody is going to be on Survivor. If, if John Carroll Jones. gets me at John Fincher, I would switch. Are you worried that this could be a storyline that John Carroll comes into Survivor Robs vs. Johns with a vendetta against you, and, and even when he holds up his vote, he says, at fifth Survivor John when he oh, votes you out. Oh, wow. That w but that, that maybe he doesn't vote me out when he writes my name down. Yeah, maybe, uh, that would be actually that. be very confusing. Uh, you may need to resort to Twitter handles because you're going to have, okay, so uh, I would... I was talking with John F and right, and then John and John, John P C was there and yeah. then J R showed John R showed up. Probes would have to have John to, R showed up. Yeah. <laughs> Probes would have to just go all last names. Right. So it's like uh, so. Penner, Cochran, Fishback, right. Carol. He likes it. Um, yeah. Look at Fishback making a guest appearance on Survivor. John. Oh, did I say, did I say Fishback? <laughs> That's fair. Oh, sorry about That's that. That's fair. Uh, I meant Cochran. Did I say uh, Cochran? Yeah, you, you did. I think yes. Um, look, I, 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 if you want. To, if he wants to play with me, I'd gladly play with him. I think we could have a great Survivor John Alliance. Okay. Whether it's first, fifth, or the real first, or or any any combination therein. John DeBono wants to know now that Cochran has won Survivor, who is the John that sucks? Oh wow. So uh, we all know that uh, I am the Rob that sucks. Okay. Uh, you are. Yes. And you uh, like that title? You've taken that. You've taken. Well, that it clears on. up any sort of confusion. Okay. Um, between myself and the Rob that doesn't suck. But um, the Rob that doesn't suck is never called Rob. He's always called Boston Rob. <laughs> that's, well, that's true, but sometimes right. there's some confusion. Okay, fair. Uh, is there, who is the John that sucks? I guess it would have to be me. Oh, so you're the John that sucks. <laughs> no. Oh. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not privy to that. I can't, I, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's probably one of the guys from Vanuatu. Fair. I, I don't know who all the other Johns were. I think there was a, uh, there was a... JP, and there was another. Was I want to say there was a John C. There was a, there was two Johns on one season. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And now um, there's this John. Then Candace they'll is, yeah. Then they'll be on uh, Survivor Robs versus Johns. Yeah. Uh, does this John? Does John Carroll have an H in his name? Uh, no. He is J. Oh uh, no, I'm sorry. No, he does have an H he in his first H. name. Okay, yeah. Fair. Um, Blue Bear wants to know who gets the Finchy this episode. Oh wow. Wow, is this something that's going to be new? Uh, maybe I'm going to have to start a blog. Maybe I'll have to do this. Yeah. People ask me a lot of things like that. Um, I'm going to give the fishy, the finchy, to Brad for the way he conducted himself at uh, Redemption Island. So you vote for showing up and waving the white flag. You give he gets a a finchy. He does. Com okay. A competitor, a true competitor. Here we go. We're gonna play the fishy music. What do we got? Fishy, fishy! Fishy, fishy! <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, let's see. What what else do we have? Uh, Listen, some... I got a couple here from my people. Oh my god! Uh, you, tell you, you? Well, I was gonna tell you, you. This yeah. is a serious. Question. All right. So hold on. So you have you have questions from your the followers of at Survivor John have questions they Correct. want you to answer on this Correct. podcast. Correct. Okay. So you're bas you're interviewing yourself right now. Right. So okay. here's the first question. I just wanted to clarify. Right. Who is this guy at the first Survivor John? Was he of an on Survivor? Oh no! This that's is the, you're adding fuel the to question. the fire. That's yes, the question. he was on Survivor Marquesas. Much more importantly, here's a question from Hugh. Okay. Do you think the Habs will win the Stanley Cup this year? Hashtag Go Habs Go. Well, why are we talking about hockey? I don't know. I've got a lot of fans in Montreal. I like Montreal. <laughs> I love Montreal. Is it, you know, I've got another one here from Rachel. Rob Sesternino. Yes. At Survivor John. When is he coming back to Montreal? And if he does, can I buy him a La Bat Bleu? <laughs> Why do you have such a big Canadian following? I love Canada. I used to do a lot of business in Montreal. I was actually just there. Uh, Parvati and I were just there uh, like a month ago. Uh, I love Montreal. Love Vancouver too. Love Toronto. Love them all. Uh, yes, Rachel, I'd love for you to buy me a beer. Uh, Jason or Rachel, maybe you're a francophone. Jason Arak wants to know, were you surprised that out of everyone from Survivor Samoa, they chose Laura M. to play again? Now, Russell's been back, mm -hmm. and Russell Swan has been back. Sure. And that's it. 
Um, I, I, I think there's a moderate level of surprise there. Um, I, I know they like that 40-something-year-old demographic. Uh, I think in this case... They, they hit it hard this season. Well, I think in this case it's interesting because Jeff said, you know, I, I think I already said it, we weren't really going to do anything with Laura. Maybe we were, maybe we weren't, but then we met her daughter and, oh my God, we had to do something. To me, Monica Culpepper, you know, fills and completes the attractive 40-year-old demographic and does so much more effectively than Laura does. You know, I think Monica is more attractive. Who would you rather she's... get a massage from? I guess let's do the let's do the uh, massage, marry, kill. Uh, <laughs> ma- massage, marry, kill. Uh, Tina, Laura, and Monica. Go. I'm going... It's so one you get a massage from, one you have to marry, and one you get to kill. I, I'll marry Culpepper. Okay. I will get a massage from Tina. Yeah. And I'll off Laura. Really? I think... Hmm. You would rather marry Tina? This is this is tough. This is tough for me. Uh, I kind of feel like I'd, I'd take the massage from, from Laura. Laura. I feel like that, massage, like that was really like a, not a bad <laughs> massage. I mean, if, I mean, if you're going to get a massage <laughs> from one of these three... Uh, I feel like, uh, I feel like marrying Monica is. I think Monica's a loyal wife. She's yeah, a smart. It's like, uh, like, hey, Monica, leave me alone. I got like 19 podcasts to do today. Okay, right. you got it, Rob. You right. got it. Right. You got it. whatever you need. She's got it. You She's got, got the it. Ice I got. Water don't worry. You. She's got everything there. I'll take care. Perfect. You want a drink? You want perfect. anything? I no, got she it wouldn't you. even ask. It would just show up. Yeah, it would just show right up right when you needed it. I got it for you, babe. Perfect. Cold. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and I just kind of feel like by default, I, I, I love Tina, but I feel like... You're going to offer, huh? Poor I feel girl. like... She's nice to keep her around. She'd have a nice conversation with you. She's got a nice... Play, she play, she play uh, Scrabble with me? Sure. Sure. Right? But I'm sorry. I only get to keep two. Sorry, Tina. I only get to keep two. I okay. disagree. Uh, Brian Scally wants to know, do you think that the returning players were just thinking about making life easier for the viewers so they only have to worry about one Laura? I think there's a lot. That, that's exactly what you think about out there. Is how can I make life the easiest for everyone that's watching? Uyanga B says, uh, "Who would get the you are an idiot speech?" And can you give us one regarding this season? Oh God, let's see. I've already, <laughs> I've already. We we really only know. Is there anybody left? We really only know that there's one true idiot, and she was just voted off. <laughs> um, is that a little? Is that who, a little harsh? Who, who's left? Hang on a second. Hang on. Okay, a second. give us. Look at. Go to the board. I'm looking. Go to the board. All right, it's probably this is dead air. This is take this is taking a while. Here we look. You can look over here. Look I over here. I don't see a lot of any idiots. any. You see any idiots? I don't see a lot of idiots. So certainly there's no idiots on the returning track. Hey, you got to talk into the microphone. You're, going, you're, you're no, drifting. Uh, Laura Bonham maybe. Is yeah. that Too easy. Or Ru- should I Rupert? You're an idiot. If if you Rupert, that's how you feel, Rupert. If you show up with no pregame alliances, knowing how obnoxious everyone perceives you to be, you're an idiot. Rupert, if you show up and try to be a hero for your wife that everyone is already finding to be equally as obnoxious as you, trade places with her and then lose in Redemption Island, you're an idiot. Rupert, if you don't change your look in 10 years and identify yourself as a formal, former gubernatorial candidate, you're an idiot. That's all I got on Rupert. Okay. I've actually never met Rupert. I'm sure he's a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> by, by the way, the, the reaction is coming in uh, April uh, at Apes2342. Uh, uh, this Rob has a podcast with Survivor John is a winner. Whoa! Yeah. I'm glad you're entertained. I haven't even been trying to be my entertaining self. Maybe I should really let it yeah, loose I think, here. I think but really finish strong. I think you've been pretty loose. Oh, God, I think perfect. So. I think so. Let me just see if there's any uh, new questions that, have, that have come in since... Uh, since we started this thing. Um, okay, so uh, Tiara Combs wants to know, uh, were you ever the recipient of a Laura M. sensual massage? I don't care what she says, this was not your average massage. You, you covered this. I, I, I think we've covered that. I agree. Yeah. Here's an interesting one, okay, from uh, at Yukon RR. At Survivor John, is there any reason uh, to why the rich athlete stigma hasn't been attached to Culpepper like others from past seasons? Hmm. Interesting question. Yeah. Um, who were the other athletes? There was that baseball player, right? Jeff Kent. Jeff Kent. Uh, Gary Hogaboom. Okay. You know, the, there's are we, been. Are we counting Jimmy Johnson? Jimmy maybe Johnson. In this? Right. He was that, an athlete that, that, and he was rich. Anybody who's sort of well off. Right. right? It's always, you, you always have to sort of like play poverty. Right. The uh, not poverty. Right. Play the poverty card. Correct. And sort of be like, oh yeah, I'm a lawyer, but you know, right. it's like uh, you know, I'm a I'm a public att- uh, right. attorney. 
you know, the Mick card is I'm a physician, but I'm actually an administrator. I'm a yes, school administrator. Yes, yes. You always want to downplay. Um, so, I, you know, I don't know why. I mean, here's my initial instinct. You know, I'm, I'm a broadcaster, but I actually have a podcast. But... Here's my initial instinct. Yes. Is he's in, it, everything is relative, right? And mm -hmm. that is that he is a non-returning player. So, by definition, he isn't as threatening as some of the other players. Mm -hmm. And you have two other guys who have not successfully competed in sports, but who have successfully competed in this game, which is the most important thing, uh, right, in Tina and, and Aris, Adas. I see that was you were having a, a discussion with Fishback over what to do Yeah, what there. do you say? You, I, say I, you say Aris. I actually switch back and forth. You yes. know, Vita says Aris. Yeah, that's the thing. That's why I, I, I feel like... I'm all about pronouncing people's names correctly, but I think Aris has Americanized the name himself anyway. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I think you can go him. either I've way. Asked him, what, do you, what do you want me to say? He says, I, I, I appreciate it that you say Otis. So fair. I, so continue on. That's fair. No, I, I, on. I switch. And right. I get emails from people. It's like, hey, stop it. Right. Call him Aris. Right. I don't and know I why say, people are so affected by that. No one should have that strong of an opinion on pe that topic. People have strong opinions. It's very weird. I get a lot of email about that. But this. I get it. I mean, sometimes you would say, like, Buenos Aires, as opposed to saying Buenos Aires when you're talking to someone who speaks. I, you know, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Um, so, so we'll answer the question. Why do oh, you, I, it, I don't even remember what the question it's was. It's all relative. Why has he not got the rich athlete stigma? I oh. also think it's because there's a much more famous NFL player called Culpepper. Dante Culpepper. What's and, up? And there's also a famous Big Brother winner on this tribe. Correct. Yeah. So um, that's what I, feel I think like about that. Because I do feel like the, the loved ones of the returning players almost feel like kind of like their loved ones are, to some small degree, have some fraction of celebrity. Um, mm, interesting. So it's not like you take total random right. people right. off the street right. and are like, oh man, well, screw that guy because he's rich. Right. You know, you have like Aris, uh, Otis's brother right. has $1 million. Tina's daughter. Ar uh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Ars is one a minute. Yeah. Vetus's yeah. brother sorry. is one a minute. Right. Uh, Vetus is somebody whose brother has won a million dollars. Katie is someone whose mom has won a yeah. million dollars. I agree with you. Look, I Laura... think we've answered this question. We're going to move it along. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Here's one from Survivor CBS fans. At Survivor John, do you think at Monica Culpepper and Brad could come out on top? Whoa. Come emerge. Uh, well, Brad's going to get back in the game, and I kind of feel like there are not a lot of people who want to work with uh, Brad and Monica. They're sort of like the couple that are have so much like uh, the two lovey-dovey. Two, they're, it's nobody else can compete with them. Right. Just uh, it's not going to work out. We're like you can't be in an alliance with. Brad and Monica, I don't think. Well, now, let me ask you this, because this is something that you've said. Right? Yeah. At, at, at one point, straight from the horse's mouth, not hearsay, you said this whole blood versus water thing is a big joke because no one is voting off their love. I've said that. And I understand that you know Brad has been verbally, I would say, ab abused, right? I'm not saying you know he, whether he deserved it, or, but he was attacked, certainly. It would, would Use be an accurate abuse. descriptor. <laughs> yeah. And his wife was in a spot where she felt like it was appropriate to, to stand up for him. Um, so we've really, seen, it, it, we've really seen that they're together, right? But I think that everyone else is just as together. You know right. what I mean? I, 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 I think it's, it was all BS from Laura about, oh, I would vote off my daughter. I would like, da 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 da, da. You know, very, I don't think. It was a lot of theater I don't think night. that anything yeah. has changed from what you once said. Do you, would you change your opinion? No, I think nobody will vote off their loved ones. Right. So, so, I, so I, I think in a post-merge situation, they're just the same as everyone else. Mm -hmm. but, but I do agree with you that people are less every, likely to want to work with them. Everybody else, I think, can pretend a little bit sure, more sure. like that's not the case. Sure. And I don't think that they sure. have the... Uh, sure. They're not able to pretend. What I would say that's interesting about pretending that like, like that is, is RS has now started, has started to target people based on isolating people and breaking up pairs yeah. to make them better alliances. So strategically, we all know that someone with fewer options is a better ally. We, 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 we all agree on that, mm -hmm. I think, to, to a large extent. But that 
exposes him and Vetus because Vetus is still in the game. So yeah, it's well, an that's interesting, why this is a, it could interesting be a thing to bring up at this at this point in the game. To, what, what, are your, wanna, what are your what are your what are your well? That's we talked about this on the Spyro Nautilus last night. Is this a flawed plan for Otis as somebody who has the most threatening loved right. one still in the game? Right. Is it a smart idea to take out people based on well? I got to get isolate them from their loved right. one so they're more loyal to me. Are there more Jervises and Tysons out there who say, hey? Otis has a loved one. Right. I don't have a loved one. You don't have a loved one. You don't have a loved right. one. Let's all get together and knock out somebody who does have a loved right. one. Right. Right. That's interesting. We'll see how it plays and, out. And what we said on the thing last night is we have the luxury. We know people are thinking like this. Right. Otis may not know that Tyson and Jervis are thinking this Well, way. the beauty the beauty of Survivor is it's, not, it's, it's purely absent of logic in most cases, right? Mm -hmm. So he can tell people that. They can do it, and then they can then not turn around and, and ax him for the same reasons. So it's not necessarily flawed because Survivor isn't played in a boardroom where you're presenting like a series of logical, rational arguments, right? Billy Gross wants to know, is Laura's vote out really that shocking? She was the second choice to be voted out on the first day. Is that is that fair? Is that fair? Uh, should we not have been surprised? I, I I don't think we should have been that surprised. Okay. Uh, Maxine Gouthier Lafont says, uh, John, you were on with Laura M on Galoo on one of the most dominant tribes in challenges. Mm -hmm. Laura won two individual immunity challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, that is part of another dominant physical tribe. How strong is Laura in the challenges, and is she one of the most underrated female physical players in your opinion? She's of average strength, and no, she is not underrated. She's not underrated. Correct. She's, She's nothing special. She's properly rated. She's nothing special. Uh, she it, it's it's all relative. I think Tyson said in Token Chains, he said JT went on this you know immunity run, but he was just beating all the leftovers, right? <laughs> How did he say it? it was a really funny clip, mm -hmm. um, meaning that he was out and all that stuff. I think it's all relative, right? Like we we've seen. You know her win. Uh, uh, you know people are using Puzzle Queen as a descriptor for Laura. We've seen her beat her daughter in a puzzle that is uh, has never done a puzzle before, has zero experience, and whose partner was like you know Tina's daughter, Katie, right? So it's all relative. It might take her 20 minutes to to finish a puzzle, and that's good enough to win. When Boston Rob might have finished it in five minutes, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I I I would never be particularly nervous about competing against her. Um, and uh, you know, in fact, in, in fact, the only challenge that I, uh, in which I competed against her, she lost. Oh, and you won. Correct. There you go. Yeah. Ding. Uh, Jeff McGinnis wants to know: there are five pairs remaining in the game. Which pair do you think has the best shot to go the furthest without either uh, member getting eliminated, if not the full distance? Who's the last pair standing? Bushkowskis. But they're also the most threatening pair. In but the game. we have Redemption Island. So what's up? No, but They're both I, physically strong. But in, I, I think the question is okay. Not so that's going, a different question. Not sure, going so to if, Redemption Island. Okay. Um, maybe Tina and her daughter. Maybe her so. daughter has passed the point where she will get voted off. Least threatening. Certainly, Sierra should be next on the chopping block. Uh, and. Uh, maybe she's past that, and then she gets to float into a third place position. And Tina's pretty d uh, deeply buried in the alliance of returning players. You agree? Uh, I, I agree. I think that's the right call. Right. Um, Ryan Smith says uh, it seems like it's been a while since the show included a segment on the wear and tear the game has on people. Mm. Uh, Rob and John, what were some of the gnarliest wounds and maladies you saw? And are there any that you've heard about secondhand that didn't make the show that were particularly nasty? Well, what's uh, well, I what? mean, I watched two guys nearly die in front of me. So, well, who was the other one? Well, Mike Barassi was pulled medevaced from Samoa, and yeah. Russ Swan was medevaced from Samoa. Okay. Uh, but you know, and in, in, in particular, you know, we you we didn't see uh, the the Mike Barassi uh, incident that was sort of after we had left and and all that stuff. But you see how real and serious it is mm -hmm. uh, in, in the edit. Um, the Russell Swan incident, um, I actually went over to get him. Um, Laura was in, uh, you know, during the challenge, Laura was in this ball that was getting rolled, and she was just screaming at him over and over, Russell, 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 Wait, Russell. Wait, now, hold on a second. Are uh, you blaming no, 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 Laura Moret no, no, no. for Russell Swan not, almost dying? Not at all. Not at all. But he, I, I, I'm telling you how she and I view the same situation She didn't help, though. She didn't help? She, not at all. She is saying Russell, 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 Ru and, it, and it hits me that clearly Russell isn't deaf, so something must be wrong. He can't get over 